Hello everyone and welcome to the talk show. We are here in the Classic Lounge today and I am very happy to be joined by Clem from Smashing Wines this morning. Good morning. So on the 16th of November, we are hosting a wine tasting event with Smashing Wines. Now, so Clem, can you tell me how long has Smashing Wines been going? So we started Smashing Wines in 2016. We started as wholesaler to start with and we opened our shop in Woodbridge in 2017 to start retail with the website and the shop in one year after starting the business. Wow, um, so kind of what got you into the wine business to start with? So I'm originally from Bordeaux and um, I've got lots of friends and family friends that are working in the industry and that's how it started really after university, um, followed friends and family friends around Oh, wine. Amazing. So did you always have kind of a love for wine? Yes, when you are from this region, it's all about <laughs> it's all about food and wine. So it started from a really young age with with my parents to start with. They love wine, they love food and they just um, get us into it too. And so what's the kind of idea behind you um, starting Smashing Wines? What was the first thing that you went, OK, right, I need to do this? So when I met uh, Rebecca, my partner, uh, I was visiting her. Um, every few months and um, I was always a bit disappointed by the lack of choice in small independent winemakers mm -hmm. and um, so when we moved back in England in um, 2016 that's uh, when we decided to start importing small independent winemakers. I had a shop, a wine shop in France in Meribel um, in, in the Alps and uh, so I already started building a relationship with the winemakers Wow! Um, and I thought that if we are moving in England that will be um, a good business to carry on and, and bring small winemakers and not only big, big brands uh, that you can find everywhere. Was that quite hard to do to kind of convince the um, people from, was it the Alps where you did Well it? the shop was in the Alps in the but Alps. the winemakers we started with uh, were mainly from Bordeaux because that's where I've got my connections um, and year after year we um, we had it more uh, regions, more winemakers. So now we are supplying wines from all over France, uh, Burgundy, uh, Bordeaux, Ardèche, uh, Languedoc, everywhere, really Champagne wow. also. Amazing. So uh, tell us how you originally, originally, like the first time, the, the first time you thought, okay, the wine industry is where I need to be. What, when was that and how did you get into it? Um, well, it was really after university. Um, my first job was, um, for a caviar producer wow. near Bordeaux. Uh, and I was working, uh, promoting the caviar at uh, food and drink uh, shows. Uh, so that's really how it started. And I got to meet producers and we were touring the different shows in France uh, together. So we, we started uh, building relationships like that. Um, and so yeah, I attended lots of uh, food and drink events uh, where we were doing uh, wine pairing with mm -hmm. the caviar, for example. Or, or foie gras, or other, other food supplier. Wow, it sounds like you've had such a kind of varied background in these very wonderful things like the food and the drink. It sounds amazing. So was wine always kind of your kind of favourite thing it, like to drink, or did you prefer like the kind of caviar -y stuff and then you kind of got into the wine no, through I think it, that? It goes, you can't have nice food without, without nice a nice wine. glass of wine so <laughs> it, it goes it goes together it goes yeah. hand in hand yeah. definitely oh and also because um it's not only wine though do you do because i know that you we had a barbecue not that long ago yes. and you were doing the barbecue for us as well exactly. doing all the cooking so do you cook as well yeah well it, it, as i said that's that's a big part in our uh, lifestyle so we love to travel we love to cook and and sample wines from all over the world and and try different food and try different pairings. Oh, amazing. So, but thank you so much for bringing all these wonderful wines over that you've found for us. It's very exciting, <laughs> very exciting indeed. So we here at Bridge Classic Cars, we host a lot of events um, in the evenings, at the weekends, in the afternoons. And here is a little taster of some of our events we've previously done. And then we'll have another little chat to Clem in just a second.
So now, Clem, we are doing a little collaboration, Bridge Classic Cars and Smashing Wines, and you are giving us a very wonderful competition prize, aren't you? And it's this box that we see, you see in front of us. So, Clem, can you tell us a little bit about this prize yeah. that we're giving away? So the case we are offering for the raffle is Chateau Canon 2016. So it's an iconic name in Saint-Emilion. Um, the property is owned by Chanel, the fashion brand, since 2016, and this is actually the first vintage they produced. That is so cool! Uh, so that's a premier Grand Cru classé. Uh, it's a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Um, and I choose this wine because I had the opportunity to visit the property and sample the wine um, during an imprimeur uh, week in Bordeaux. Uh, so I've got a, a fond memory of it. Oh, uh, wow. It was a, a good moment. So what is a primer? What, what, what does that entail? What happens? Uh, so the imprimeur is, it's an annual uh, tasting uh, where you go and sample wine straight out of the barrel and you purchase wine before uh, it's bottled and wow. released on the market. Okay, so does it taste nice when you have it straight out of the barrel, or is it? No, it's it's that the it's not at its best. So <laughs> you have to trust, uh, tr project, and <laughs> imagine what the wine will become when ready to drink and bottled. So Clem, tell me, what is special about this particular wine? I know you've gone and um, tried a similar one before, but what's really special about this one? So it's a classic Saint-Emilion. It's aged in oak barrels for 18 months. Um, as I say, it's a blend of Merlot and Cabernet Franc. Uh, it's a rich wine with notes of violet, plum, red fruit, spices. Oh, sounds amazing. Um, and it's, it's perfect for Christmas celebration, really, uh, or cellaring. You can, you can keep it for a few years. Amazing. Well, I, I wish I could buy a ticket, because honestly, it sounds like my dream <laughs> wine. I do love wine, I have to say. So if you are interested in this fabulous competition, go to the Bridge Classic Cars competitions website, and all of the information will be on there for you to be able to buy your ticket. It's certainly one that I think a lot of people are going to be interested in, definitely. It Hopefully. sounds amazing. Amazing. Um, so yes, we are having our event on the 16th of November. Um, so can you tell people, Clem, what, what are they going to expect from the afternoon? Uh, so it's going to be a bit in the primer style. We will have uh, a lineup of wine. Uh, we will be offering sparkling, um, white, red, dessert wines, um, everything for your Christmas celebrations. Um, so you can go along ask questions about the wine, about the winemakers, and we can offer pairings if you know already what you are cooking for Christmas or New Year. Um, we can guide you, help you, and, uh, and have a nice afternoon with wine, cheese, charcuterie boards. Oh, yes, I was going to say. Cars, too, so. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I was going to mention, because you um, mentioned earlier when you were talking about how wine and food just go so well together, you can't really have one without the other. I was going to ask if there's going to be any food on the afternoon. So you've just mentioned cheese. Is any type special types of cheeses or just cheeses that you know goes well with the so wine? So we'll try to show some pairings, for example, brie with sparkling wines goes really well. Uh, we'll try blue cheese with dessert wine, that's also a really good pairing. So, uh, and we'll do the same with different meats. So um, it's just to, to support the wine, support the food, support the wine. Um, during the tasting. Well, it sounds like it's going to be an absolutely fantastic afternoon. Now, I must mention, so it is from 12 until 5, but uh, like uh, McLean mentioned, it's going to be quite a relaxed afternoon. You're going to be able to choose what wines you like. It's not going to be 12 till 5 constantly. You have to try this wine, you have to try that wine. You're not going to be completely gazeboed by the time you leave. <laughs> Hopefully. So it's going to be a really lovely afternoon. Wine, cheese, meat, classic cars. What more could you want? Um, but thank you so much for joining us, Clem. No, it's okay. been absolutely fantastic. Now, this competition is live on the website at the moment. But earlier this week, there was a very, very lucky person who won our MGC. So go and check this out. Let's go for it. This is the live draw for our 1970 MGC. Good luck, everybody. I'm going to count down from three. Three. Two, one. Number 6,419. 6,419. 6,419. Peter Lee. Peter Lee. Congratulations, Peter. Hello, Peter speaking. Um, hello, Peter. Is that Peter Lee? Yeah. Hi, Peter. It's Molly calling from Bridge Classic Cars. 
How are you? Hiya. Hiya. Um, so, Peter, we've just done the live draw for our MGC, and I'm very happy to tell you, Peter, that you are the lucky winner. No way! No way! <laughs> yes! Uh, that's incredible. Wow. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Here at Bridge Classic Cars, we aren't just about competitions. We are first and foremost about car restorations. And we are definitely not strangers to some beautiful and rare classic cars, just like this 1957 AC Ace. Bristol and we're going to go and have a little chat now with Big John to tell us all about it. So got the ACS Bristol, came in, was listing over to the near side for the car, customer was sort of like it wasn't like it beforehand, it'd been to a car show, came back so put up in the ramp, had a look around it, couldn't see any definite faults or anything you could say that's why it's doing it. So we decided we'll take the springs off and send them away to be retempered. Um, front one came off easy, two bolts at the top of the spring hold it on, four bolts hold the spring to the chassis. We got around to the back of the car, started undoing the rear spring and noticed there's only four nuts holding the spring on. Undone the, four, um, the three nuts and one of the nuts was loose and it had sheared off the stud which holds the rear spring on. So this could be what the problem is with the fact that it was the near side of the car where the two um, bolts are sheared off and so the spring can be lifting up making it sit lower this side. We've now got a situation where we've got to try and find a way of repairing the chassis without taking the body off hopefully um, because to gain access means we have to remove the diff which I'm hoping we can get away without doing it but I think we might have to be a situation where we have to take the diff off. Thank you so much for joining us for another talk show this week. I'll be back again next week and I won't be all by myself. I will have the team here from Bridge Classic Cars alongside me to tell you all about the fabulous things we've been up to.